I have a, a raw file embedded in this smart object so I can just double click the smart object thumbnail in order to take a, in order to take a look at the settings I've been using okay we've got a, a slightly modified um, color temperature here of 4000 degrees Kelvin and zero on the tint an exposure value of plus one highlights in order to start the uh, high key look here we've raised these to plus 80 and I've set the blacks at minus 25 because I've already processed this file I can just hit the cancel to return to the main editing space of Photoshop CS6 now I'm going to create a luminosity mask this luminosity mask will help protect uh, the darker tones from the high key uh, curve that we're about to create so I'm going to go over to the channels panel and I'm going to take a look at the red the green and the blue channels. The red gives me the uh, uh, lightest skin tones here so I'm going to use this as the basis of my luminosity mask. I'm going to hold down the command key on a Mac or the control key on a PC and then click on the red channel thumbnail to load the channel as a selection. I then must click on the RGB master channel before returning to the layers panel. I can now apply a curves adjustment. The selection has created a mask already. If I take a look at the layers panel, you can see the selection has been turned into that layer mask. And the darker areas of this layer mask will help protect the shadow tones. OK, I'll just return to the curve adjustment. And now I can start to raise this curve in order to raise all of the mid-tone values uh, to highlight tones. OK, I've raised this uh, really quite high and uh, what I can do now is I can return uh, to the, um, the layers panel. If, uh, if I want to uh, take a look at uh, what will happen if I don't have this layer mask in place, I can just hold down the shift key and toggle that on and off. And you can see the curve adjustment would flow through to the darker tones if we hadn't uh, applied uh, that luminosity mask. Okay, we can also increase the uh, contrast of this luminos luminosity mask by just applying an adjustment. Now, it won't be an adjustment layer, it'll be an adjustment straight from the image adjustments menu. Here, I'll, I can try the brightness contrast adjustment, but you can also uh, apply a levels or curves. It may sound a bit strange applying a curves adjustment to a, a, a curves adjustment layer, but remember, we're only um, applying the adjustment to the layer mask and not to the entire image. Okay, so I'm just going to come in with the brightness contrast and uh, I'm going to raise that uh, contrast slider to a plus 100 and you'll see how it protects uh, the shadow tones even more uh, as we do that. And I can also have control over the brightness here and uh, I'm just going to leave that at uh, perhaps zero for this project and select OK. Uh, we could also take a look at ins inside um, what's happening into this uh, layer mask just by holding down the Alt key on a PC or the Option key on a mask and then clicking on the layer mask thumbnail. You can see how we could come in with perhaps a levels adjustment and then uh, make those uh, shadow tones even darker or the highlight tones even brighter. I'm going to leave that as it is and, and cancel out there. But what I am going to do is I'm going to try and do some manual corrections using the, uh, um, the burn and dodge tools inside of this layer mask feature. So I'm going to cl click on the burn tool in the tools panel here. Now I've got mid-tone set and I'm using 100% exposure value. And we're going to come in with the uh, burn tool. I'll just decrease the size of the brush using the, um, the square bracket keys. And then I'm going to paint over the lips here just to darken them down. And I'll need about three or four passes here to, in order to build up the density of that lips. Now you might see that the lips start to look a little bit strange, but we are just working inside of the layer mask and not uh, the actual image itself. I could also come over to the eyes. I'll perhaps take a, a zoom in here uh, whilst I work the eyes and just decrease the size of the brush here. I'm just building up the intensity of um, perhaps the eyebrows there and also the detail on the eyes. 
Okay, and we're going to see uh, what, what that effect on the image is going to have. If we just click on that curves icon on the um, uh, adjustment layer, we'll return to the actual image. And now you can see we've built up the uh, density of those lips and the eyes really quite nicely by burning that information into the layer mask, which further protects those tones from the very aggressive uh, curves adjustment that we applied to this image. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, try and lighten the background. You'll see it's already very light, but it's not absolute white. If we did uh, want this to be um, absolute white as the background, then we could create another curves adjustment just to highlight these uh, areas. And so I could come into the channels panel, and then I could cycle down through the red, green, and blue channels. It doesn't really matter which one we use in this instance, I'll just duplicate the blue channel by dragging it to the new channel icon. I then want to create a mask uh, that uh, exposes the background to uh, a curves adjustment so I can clip this to absolute white. And so I'll need to create a silhouette of, the, um, of this uh, portrait here. And so what I'm going to do is again with the burn tool, 100% um, on the exposure and midtone selected. I'm just going to uh, burn the hair uh, darker inside of this image. Now, because it's set to midtones, it won't actually make the um, uh, the white background uh, any darker. So I can move over the edge of that hair as I burn this uh, darker. Okay, and so we're creating uh, a nice uh, darker tone there on the interior. And you'll need to work um, make make many passes here in order to burn some of this information to black. And so we're working down here. And you can just uh, apply multiple clicks, perhaps to speed this process up. Um, I'm just clicking the mouse uh, very frenetically now in order to build up that tone. And again, coming down here, just uh, rapidly clicking the mouse button to build up the tone on the edge of this hair. And just moving right down to the base of this image here on the right-hand side and also on the left-hand side there. Now I'm not going to be able to uh, burn the uh, the interior over these very light tones, so I'm going to need to uh, switch to the brush tool now. And uh, we've got black as the foreground color, and I can now paint this in. I'm just going to increase the hardness of the brush, holding down the shift key and the close square bracket key to create a much harder brush so I don't spill over the edges there. I'm just filling in the interior of this subject here now. And just so I've got a pure silhouette inside of this um, this channel mask here. Okay, uh, we can also uh, switch the foreground and background colors. I'm just going to switch to um, press the X key, and uh, we could use the dodge tool. Alternatively, we can just come in with the um, the brush tool and uh, set the um, blend mode to overlay. And now we can come in and uh, sort of bleach that background uh, back to white. And coming around, we are losing some of the fine details of hair, but remember this is just an alpha channel mask, so uh, we'll still have the detail in the actual subject that we're working on. Okay, now I've got an alpha channel mask of, uh, of the portrait here. I'm just going to load that as a selection just by holding down the command key on a Mac, control key on a PC, and load that blue copy channel as a selection. I'm then going to hit the RGB master channel before returning to the layers panel and coming in and picking up a new curves adjustment layer. Okay, Now as we work this one we're going to uh, simply just drag in the white input slider here and move that to uh, the left hand side and this is actually clipping that background to white. The background is represented by this very tall peak on this histogram so as we've come in a short distance this um, background is now absolute white I'll just zoom back out so we can see a before and after. Just click on the, um, the layers panel there and then just uh, toggle that and you can see how we've now rendered that background uh, absolute white. Okay, now I want to uh, recreate um, uh, that softening effect. We used a, a negative clarity um, uh, value inside of Adobe Camera Raw when we were creating this high key effect. Um, we can actually uh, improve on that effect inside of the main editing space uh, using the Gaussian Blur filter. Uh, in order to apply the Gaussian Blur, I'm going to apply it to uh, a stamp visible layer. 
I'm going to use the keyboard shortcut for this uh, stamp visible. And on a Mac that's Command Option Shift and on a PC that's Control Alt Shift. Holding down those three modifier keys I just hit the letter E on the keyboard and that creates this stamp visible layer. It's basically selected all of the pixels uh, of the merged version of all three layers and then uh, pasted them onto its own new layer. And I can call this stamp visible and I'm about to blur this so I'll add that to the uh, layer name. Let's uh, zoom in as we take a look at what we're about to do here. Okay, I'm going to come in um, and apply the Gaussian Blur. But we're going to apply the, the Gaussian Blur um, to uh, this layer in, blend, in the blend mode. Now we can either apply the blend mode first, the blend mode is going to be soft light, okay, um, and uh, then apply the Gaussian Blur. Sometimes it's easier to apply the, um, the blend mode uh, afterwards, so we get an idea of the appropriate um, blur setting that we actually want to use first. Okay, so that's the way I'll approach this uh, in this uh, instance. So filter, blur, and Gaussian blur. And the idea of the uh, ideal setting for the radius on the blur is we need to remove any hint of uh, texture, but we don't want to lose the basic shapes of what we're actually trying to uh, soften here. And so in this instance, it's going to be um, somewhere uh, too much detail. It's going to be somewhere in between 10 and perhaps 15 uh, for this uh, project that we're working on, that's probably too much, losing too much of the information. So just back up a little short way. I'll go for about 10 in this instance and select OK. And as we apply the blend mode uh, to this image, uh, soft light, you'll see the softening effects now is uh, merged with the rest of the image. So just to show you a before and after. Okay, the softening of the skin tones. Now um, we're getting a little bit of a spike in uh, saturation values um, and uh, contrast that is unwanted via the soft light blend mode. So uh, we can compensate this uh, with uh, yet a another curve. I'm going to come in with a curves adjustment layer once again. And uh, we're going to need to um, uh, uh, create a reverse S curve to uh, lower the contrast. And a reverse uh, S curve is just to pull down the highlight tones, just to lower um, the brightness of those highlight tones, and then open up the shadow tones. And as I do that, you'll see the saturation disappear uh, from this image and return back to its more uh, typical setting. Sometimes you might need a, a couple of adjustment points on this um, this tone curve in the shadows in order to uh, get it to um, the tone curve must pass through approximately the midpoint on this curve. And uh, I think I'm reasonably happy with that reverse S curve now. And uh, we'll zoom out to take a look at the effect of this. Okay, again, going to the layers panel and toggling off the visibility of that curve, you'll see it not only lowers the contrast but pulls the excessive saturation out. And if I take off the two uh, visibilities of this, you'll see a before and after of the softness. Okay, again, I'll probably zoom in um, so you can see that. Uh, just both of them just a little bit softer uh, which is just a little bit more pleasant for the skin tones inside of this image. So there you can quite quickly see how we've created uh, the high key look inside of Photoshop CS6 um, using a luminosity mask, using a mask to protect the subject when we brighten the background and using um, a contrast curve in order to lower the contrast after applying a blur uh, using uh, the soft light blend mode.